and we're pushing into 1864 here. Not a lot of turns left, just three turns to make a lot of points for the Union. And we know how hard those points are. Right now they're at 44, and the Confederates are at, I got three listed. I don't know how true that is. There's one there, one there, one there. Looks about right. Um, plus the CP table though which I think counts. Uh, that puts me up to 27. So I'm only at about 17. I need a lot more points by turn 17. But there's nothing in my way here. Over here in the west. And, and here's the thing. Because I was planning and wasn't counting on Jackson disappearing, losing his army. Well, this is my primary theater for the, for the Confederates. So... A lot of their points are going to be spent on stuff that essentially is going to be guerrilla warfare. It might be an annoyance, and it might help slow down the advances that the uh, Union can make point-wise there. But it does mean that I'm disproportionately leaning towards that type of war, as opposed to where I want to be, which is here, maybe fighting for control of Kentucky, where I think I could actually convert it if I had the actions there with Johnston in the place. Uh, and Lee over here in the Trans-Mississippi has very, very few points. Just enough to do one thing if he gets lucky. It might be enough to wipe out the Army of the Cumberland. Nah, not quite. And not in a fortress. So I got a lot of troops there that are tied up somewhere I don't want them particularly. Uh... Raiders. Raiders scored some more points. I wasn't counting those suckers. That's, uh, we're up three more there, too. So I don't think Lincoln's going to win this election. But at the very least, we're beginning to see the war ch tilting towards the Union. Now, that's a tilt that, like I said, I think the Confederates would probably be in better shape, at least in terms of reinforcements, uh, if they were in the position they're in. And the game does not take into account production in that sense. The only thing it takes into account is that the costs of different actions, which includes things like depots and forts, that makes sense, but not building troops. Building troops is all based on the, uh, you know, the historical record rather than some kind of projection. All right, I'll probably get a little bit done tonight, but not much. A couple of pulses here in this uh, well, first turn of 64, really. And I'm having a really tough time with the Confederates. Uh, Johnston and Old Pete went up here and knocked out whoever, Schofield, I think it is. Yeah. Uh, knocked them out and uh, knocked him out. Okay, great. That was... You know, that's my Western action. Now I'm out of Western points, basically. I could do something else, but not with him. I don't think I have a leader I can really... That might shift some troops around. I probably do not need... I've been stealing a little bit, but I don't need this big garrison at Memphis, particularly. Not unless the Union starts to build something up at Cairo, and they could do that and really put a threat in, into plan. The biggie was I had a lot of points in the east. I had like six points in the east. <sighs> Got Magruder down here. He could have taken a couple of strength points up, but that weakens this position. Now this position cannot possibly hold against the Union, and Sherman's marched in and taken out, uh, who is it, Huger? Yeah, Huger. Yeah, great general. Uh, at Norfolk. I don't know why I'm building this fort. It doesn't do me any good. I, I would be better off being mobile, but it's just so hard to figure out how to use three points. I've got like one reinforcement I could put in place to play around up here. And I've got a lot of, uh, a lot of command points to play with. I'm probably not going to build a fortress there. I'm probably going to leave there anyway if the Union gets any closer. Um, but... It's just so tough at this kind of point. Lee has nothing he can really do to Lyon, but Lyon can't come out and attack Lee. He's got a smaller force. <sighs> the only real place I've got to play is up here in Kentucky uh, with the Confederates, and I've tapped out my points there. 
I got a next turn I'm gonna have more points in the West. Be able to maybe convert it. Alright. Turn got extended a little bit with more CPs, but we see the Union sliding down. Virginia's almost fallen. One, two, three, four. Uh, that will conquer all of Virginia if I take that hat down to that hex and take Charlottesville. Swinging it over. These over here are just industrial sites. They don't actually count towards conquering the state. So once once I take the state, it becomes neutral, and then I can shift single strength point down, which is much cheaper than using generals. Meanwhile, uh, Sherman's kind of stopped here. Not much to do there. We see uh, McDowell moving up here, but I'm considering creating an army. I realize I've been cheating and throwing army uh, western reinforcements, just like I was using western CPs. It, it's tough. You know, you see this line and you're pretty sure, yeah, one side's the Mississippi, the other side's not. But when you're in the Louisiana swamp, eh, the definition of one theater or the other feels a little weird to me. So I don't feel too terrible about cheating that. This is uh, Van Dorn running away from his command because I found somebody better to take command of that. Actually, he didn't have any troops. I brought troops in and then brought early in. Um, and once I got that, I'm like, well, Van Dorn's out of there, man. Uh, I'm sending Van Dorn over to Fort Bliss, maybe. I doubt it. He's actually just kind of hiding here at this depot. Uh, but the thing is, if he gets to Fort Bliss, he could do something in New Mexico, maybe? I don't know. Remember, that's only a couple of points. But we're at the point in the game where the Confederates may not have much to do with their, their command points. So uh, it's kind of tricky. You know, I mean, when I see this, I'm like, ah, I don't know what to do. Trans-Mississippi, well, I do kind of want to defend that. And it's a long way. For Burnside to get there, but and he's got to build depots and everything on his way. So I don't think he's getting out of there anytime soon. All right, well that's where we are right now. Hey, that black line is not a red dot. I can slip back into the west there. Mm. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we opened things up this morning. Uh, with the Confederates getting a jump three points, they start, they've almost converted all of Kentucky. All I've got left is Mill Springs here. I know that I'm facing a big enough Confederate force that I can't just build troops there. I don't think I'm in supply either at this point anymore. Uh, I don't think I can trace through the zone of the army. Uh, meanwhile, though, Virginia's fallen, and that granted a lot of points to the Union. Now the problem here though is if the Union gets the next jump they're gonna want to do something and maybe grab Paddocka or something to try to prevent the conversion of Kentucky because Kentucky like Virginia it's a lot of points all at once for the conversion uh, the surrender essentially and it also kinda changes the nature of the war the Confederates can start moving single units through Kentucky at that point. Just like now the Union can move a single unit down here and grab these mines if they so desire. So I've got to try to figure out how to prevent Kentucky from falling. Of course, the Confederates win the die roll. That's all there is. Well, not quite all there is. They did win the die roll. They got a three-point run, but uh, they don't have any command points. They have two discretionary ones. That's it. And I gotta figure out what to do with this. For the Confederates, Magruder's sitting here. He gave up his fort. That was three CPs he just threw away. Marched up though and defeated Ord up here in Lynchburg. He hasn't prevented the collapse of Virginia. Virginia surrendered. But at least he's doing something in the East he can do and threatening Northern Virginia, etc. However, for the Union, they built up a unit in Cairo, marched down to Paducah, and then built a unit there. So whatever. Uh, they're making it so that Johnston, if he succeeds here, has to march back and then another unit could drop here. So he's got to leave defenses at Frankfurt and Lexington. His own army is not that big. So, uh, and nor does he have a lot of reinforcements coming over here on the track. Yeah, and just one more over the course of the game. Lee opens up fighting online here. Demoralizes him, but then it was a big roll. 
And I don't remember what else the Confederates found so necessary to spend points on. Ah, uh, rallying Magruder. Uh, so there weren't enough points for Lee to make a second attack on the demoralized line, and the line had enough points to rally himself. Seeing Burnside abandoning the entry into Arkansas with the Confederate uh, supply depots burned, or they burned them themselves, he's thinking about sliding down and moving that army of, uh, what, the Southwest into Kentucky to directly challenge Johnston. So the Confederates spent uh, most of their last little activation building a depot so I could slide Van Dorn into the trans uh, into the far west and command an attack on New Mexico. Sort of one of those lost cause type actions. I also built myself uh, an ironclad here to defend Memphis. God knows where the supplies for an ironclad are at this point in the war, but whatever. Um, and I think it was actually historically one of these was built in the album or all or the Tennessee, I don't remember. Uh, but here's the exciting thing. General Howard lands here in Brownsville, Texas, cutting it and Matamoros off from uh, the Confederates. And what's cool here is I can use Far West command points to start doing damage now, real damage, because I've got troops down there. And that's kind of an exciting possibility compared to, you know, if I, if I made a landing over here, or over in mobile, those would be points that I could be using for other forces. But there's nothing I can do with the Trans-Mississippi, so by landing a force there, I can start doing some some damage with the with points that aren't really helping me much anyway. Uh, the Indian situation, I'm just rolling dice to flip counters. I got the Apaches, I could use them. And I will if I get a point somewhere, but I don't have that right now. One of the problems is I don't have a place to put my charts anymore. They used to go down here in Texas. Uh, I wanted to point out, though, one of the effects of all of this. Let's see if I can get some shade on this. It's fairly readable there. Over here it should be better. Taking the effects of the Confederate loss, we've dropped... Uh, Confederate imports are now down to 98 points. That's the sum of all the import points plus the production. And that means now command points to build depot, fort, or upgrade forts into fortresses go up by a point. So you see it starts becoming harder to do things. And I like that aspect of it. What I just don't like is the concept that the Confederate uh, reinforcements aren't also tied to that. I think the Confederate arm, I, I think the Confederate nation at this point would still have significant ability to put out our uh, new units. A funny thing, I didn't realize how close I was to the end, or forgot. Uh, I spent the Union's commands there, but I've got some more coming. I had five total crap. I just spent my two naval commands, actually. I didn't realize I forgot I had this. I'm not as close as I thought. Uh, to shift a strength point down to Brunswick, I feel like there's some risk the Confederacy could have launched a quick move down there next turn. But I've got a decent number of far west points that I have to use. So I'll eat those up, too. And that leaves me with one more die roll. And that taps things all out for this March-April turn. Um, Union marched up towards Corpus Christi. And I kind of feel like I need to leave troops behind in these areas. Otherwise, and I'm going to. Otherwise, the Confederates can just run in and take some of something like Brownsville, which is more important than anything along here. It's one of the problems. With me on the coast, I can ship reinforcements down there, of course, but that's kind of a painful process, too. But this is really the best I can do with my Trans-Mississippi points, I think. Uh, the Confederates would have to... Well, no, sorry, with my Far West points. The Confederates would have to actually uh, invest in getting a discretionary reinforcement or something from the Trans-Mississippi over here to try to help. And they, they don't have troops either. Uh, for the Union, 
I notice McDowell is heading his way towards Tallahassee, but there's a problem. He doesn't have Pensacola, and that's going to be if I want to convert uh, Florida, I need Pensacola as well. That didn't really work into my plan there. That's going to be a bit of a problem. Obviously, McDowell is not going to be able to go there. He'll end up striking back up towards Savannah, I think. But it does give me another goal where I have to ship maybe a leader and some troops down here to Fort Pickens to march around and take that. And that, of course, opens me up into Alabama and all that. Uh, so that's fine, too. Lots and lots of things to do. Not a lot of time to get them done over here. Uh, wrap up the turn. Put another one on Crap, I don't know where this is. I'm going to assume it's here. It was over at 65, and that's impossible. Uh, and I'll push it forward a couple more. That's one of the things when you got a lot of tracks in a game uh, and you leave it overnight or roll dice on the map or whatever, things sometimes move and they end up where they don't really belong. And, well, certainly you can't have the fair and, you know, precise victory conditions that the game kind of has been tailored and balanced for or whatever. But I think that's probably pretty close to where it should be. Things start to get weird because the sides are making very different choices here. Uh, the Confederates taking the West as their primary, the Trans-Mississippi as their secondary, and the East as their tertiary because they really have very little here. They just have Magruder. Now, of course, Magruder's kind of doomed if he doesn't have lots of points to run around and do stuff. But that's okay. That's what I've written him off as. Uh, but the Union's taken the East and the West. Uh, and, well, they're just focusing differently. That makes it more difficult for me because I have to try to remember which one I picked, especially if I scramble them up and change them, which I'm liable to do here. I'm not quite sure why. Uh, the Union's not interested in the Trans-Mississippi at all, and I don't think the Confederates are anymore. So I think they're going to swap like this. And i got to try to remember that those numbers that I placed here are not the correct ones that I have in place uh, for these die rolls. The picks that I made for this turn are the ones that are in place, and you should have these written down or something, but I don't like to do that. So I'll just try to remember and probably screw up here and there. Uh, elsewhere, well, i got to roll for the, uh, the navies. Union naval points are too valuable to me right now. I'm not going to spend, I only have two of them. I'm not going to spend them to hunt the commerce raiders down. Basically, I just got to hope for a 12 or low numbers. And I don't get either of them. So that's uh, 17 more ships sunk. Uh, 80 puts me up to 96. And we're getting up to four victory points for that, right? <laughs> I, you know, it's something the Confederates need it, but it's not something to really get your panties all knotted up about. In the summer of 64, a little bit of piddling around. Uh, Van Dorn moving through Texas, mainly reinforcements for both sides, really. The Union, did they spend anything? Yeah. Sherman marched up, grabbed some rail lines, positioning himself to fight Magruder down here. And now double sevens, which gave out a lot more points. And that's kind of the neat thing where... Uh, the sides have taken, you know, asymmetrical choices, essentially. Uh, the Union heavier in the East, the Confederates heavier in the West. Well, it magnifies that difference even more when you get these uh, additional CP rolls. Certainly the CP rolls are well worth it for the Union right now. They want as many actions as they can get, as long as they get to play them out. Sometimes the chart just screams up here and then it dumps. Uh, the turn ends, and the Confederates just get some victory points off of it. But usually, the points that the Union is giving to the Confederates at this point in the game are well worth it. The Union wants to be able to do things. Everything's wide open. And we see the effects of that with Sherman pretty much destroying Magruder. He's down to one strength point down here. Uh, and demoralized. The question is, do you turn around and leave him below? Do you leave maybe uh, a reserve force, probably? Uh, to handle him if need be as you move south. That's probably the best choice. 
or do you hit them and just wipe them out? Hitting them and wiping them out, you get an overrun attack, so that's probably not too bad either, and then can swing south from there. Over here, the army of uh, the Cumberland is nearly wiped out as well. Uh, Lee managed to hit it again. Now, he's got problems. He had like two to one odds, but with four shifts against him for the terrain, the swamp and the fortress, one, two, three, four, that puts him on the zero table. But, the Army of the Cumberlands lost a lot of leaders that were good, and Lee has too, just wounding whatever, uh, and, and actual deaths. But Lee decided to replenish his leaders. He dumped two new leaders in there. He doesn't have many options of places for the Confederates to put leaders. Johnson's army is in pretty good shape. Over here we can't have an army. So it seems like a, a decent choice there. Another roll of doubles on the CP table boosted the command points up there. It's very unlikely that either side that either side's going to get to spend all their command points now. Uh, once you hit that number of points, it becomes very likely doubles will come up again. And these, of course, are by far the most likely numbers that they'll come up. Um, what we also see is in. Make sure I've got this. We're down to. Only 95 imports. The Union ended up landing here at Pensacola. I didn't bring a leader with me. I don't really want to activate because Lee was able to destroy the Union at Fort Jackson. And I don't remember what they did their other two points for. I hope they did them. Uh, oh, they had to rally first and then strike. And Sherman stomped on Magruder, and now he's heading down into North Carolina with the overrun. Basically, grab, uh, has to grab the rail link and march his way down to maintain the rail connection. He's left some stuff there, but the Union can uh, send one unit down here to march through there. He's got to maintain his supplies, however, because he doesn't have a link to the sea. Uh, and grab what he can down here. In, South, in North Carolina at this point. See if he can convert that as well. Point-wise, we're at 64 for the Union. And 32 for the Confederates. There's a chance the Union may make that election. In the meantime, Lee's moved up northward out of the swamps. And... Uh, he did the little trick, Jackson moving up here into Kentucky, taking command of the army with uh, Johnson coming down and joining Lee. Didn't work too well last time, but this time there's no armies in the West for the Union. Sherman could slide over there, but it's a long walk, uh, and he can't use rail movement or anything like that. Um, then the Union side, they grabbed the rest of Florida, converted those points. Basically, I had a four-point span. And the choice was, well, do I want to keep moving Sherman, which is more valuable overall, but he can move on a lower span. The four-point span says, eh, I really ought to move one of these three-point leaders, either McDowell or uh, Burnside or Howard, who can grab stuff on more than, who need more than two points to grab stuff, basically. The one-pointers that I'm getting little spares here and there. Well, I slipped my Union unit up here into into Kentucky in order to kind of threaten Jackson's position there. It's not a danger to Jackson, but it means he may need to leave some garrisons behind. Now, he doesn't have a lot of force. He only has seven strength points there, so he can't really weaken it too much. Or else, you know, there's enough Union reinforcements. There's Burnsides. I could actually put a threat on that army as well. Not that that's necessarily the most efficient use of Union points at this point. That one unit is keeping Jackson sort of frozen. Mainly, not that he's completely frozen. He could go march over and attack it. That would be kind of worthless. Uh, he could send a strength point up under someone, but that would kind of weaken his army. And the better choice has been to move Lee, and he's just sliding Lee over to threaten McDowell over here in Florida. Lee's still got a pretty decent army. McDowell does not have much. On the other hand, Sherman's marched down, taking Wilmington, let Buell out. Uh, that's a couple more forces. Buell could conceivably march up and take 
uh, stuff up here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. I can't reach Moorhead City that easily by land. It might be better to just land with a naval invasion there to help clear up uh, North Carolina. I got a lot of stuff though uh, here to the west up to Charlotte. I got to take Fayetteville and Charlotte and then I can march down into South Carolina. Nice big six point roll. Ends up getting Burnside's over here and then relieving him of command, putting Ward in command there. Lee comes over, takes uh, Pensacola. Jackson's moving into place here. Now his plan is actually to strike into Virginia and try to cut the Union supply lines there. It doesn't really matter too much, but if he's threatening from the rear back there, he might be able to put a, a threat on Washington, which could be a big deal. And meanwhile, the bigger thing is Lee moving up here it will cancel out whatever McDowell's done over here. Big load of points came. Union advantage. Union ends up uh, evacuating Washington, actually. All the troops are gone from there, so the fortress is gone, I think. Ah, oh, there's unmanned forts. Wait. I think the fortress actually stays. Let me make sure about that. I'll leave it there for now. Um, but they did that to land here at Moorhead City. Take that with Meckler and and Siegel, yeah, I think uh, I'm going to leave Siegel up there if I can, too. Sherman marched across. Uh, I'll, I'll check on those rules. And over here, good old Ord came down and attacked, but he wasn't terribly successful, even though he had good odds. Now, this is bad for the Confederates, not just because of all the Union activity, but because it meant the Confederates could only use Jackson... And Lee wants, that's four points. They had seven points that they had to burn. Pretty much the rest went uh, into the useless pile, essentially. Uh, I didn't have points. I could have sent a leader up here, but I didn't have the points to do that in rally. Some trans-Mississippi points, some eastern theater points, none of which I can use. Uh, so it wasn't too terrible because I only had four discretionary points. Jackson's out of supply now. The Union managed to cut his supply line and marching his way down to connect up to Tennessee and start reconverting these rail lines to Confederates and put a threat in the Virginia sector. That's a big deal for the Union. They may have to start a new uh, the Army of the James to try to handle that. They may end up generating that out of Sherman's army and send that up under someone who knows who. They got Thomas, but he's not terribly fast. I got Lion kicking around. Next turn he comes back. He might be the best solution for that. And over here, Lee's marching. Lee would be my optimal person to be using. He's marching up uh, back into Georgia and really is a big threat for McDowell here because McDowell has to get to a port and get troops shipped in from the uh, northeast and there aren't any left. <laughs> I've been using them all. It's sort of a race at this point for the Union to try to get points, for the Confederates to try to take those points away before the, the, the election comes. Just, you know, and this particular, act, uh, the, this particular large number roll ended up favoring the Union a little bit, I think. We're almost to the bottom, though. Confederates have only one point left. The Union has a bunch of far western points, so I can use Howard, who got his promotion. He's now capable of commanding an army. As if. And I also have a pile of discretionary points. So the Union actually has a fair amount of stuff it can do if this turn keeps going. Some more actions. Howard marched his way up to Matagora, which means he's now in the Trans Mississippi and there's tons of points there now. He's used up all his far west points. Now he's in the Trans Mississippi. He can grab Galveston, Sabine City. More problems for the Confederates. Uh, showing up there. Of course, he doesn't have a lot of troops, so he can't garrison all of it. He's got Corpus Christi D and uh, Brownsville garrisoned. He doesn't have enough to garrison these. He's going to have to rely on naval supplies to do that. The Union uh, Sherman marched across North Carolina, grabbed Charlotte. That converts it. It doesn't convert the rails, so I moved an infantry unit across uh, to link himself up. He's back in supply now. And the points are beginning to look kind of good for the Union. 95 points here. The Confederates have 8. I never thought this was going to look this decent. Uh, that puts them up to 33. I'm well above the 50. I'm going to make 
the uh, the election, and I think this is the game that I've seen the Union do the best in at the end of the game. This is just something whacked about this game as far as I'm concerned. The strategy that I took fell apart, uh, you know, in the Northeast, normal, or in the East. Normally, I've got that bogged down and the Confederates are able to hold this out. But now it looks like, and you know, they lose a significant part of the West, but not all of it. It's a tough enough fight. Um... This one's looking like the best chance that I've seen, or the best position that I've seen the Union in at this stage in the game. I don't know what it's going to be, but the Confederate Army got really hurt by the battles that they pursued. It looked like they were just winning everywhere, but now they're losing the game in a way that I'm not used to them uh, being in this kind of position. Interesting. And that's the end of the Union points. Another Trans-Mississippi activation grabbing Sabine City. Where's Columbia? Oh, I grabbed that too. That's another. Imports are down to 75. That may be a little off. I don't know how to mark these. I'm gonna start dropping depots in these because I'm running real low out of uh, the markers, um, the little flags. So, yeah, I've pretty much taken the entire Texas coast here. Cut the import points. Why is it a little low? Because I haven't really been accounting for the 30% losses, so I got to recalculate at the beginning. But right now we're down to penalties. Uh, command points for depots, forts, and upgrading fortresses are up to one. Up, in upgrading a fort to a fortress goes up to five, actually, and uh, naval points cost three for the Confederates. Pretty soon it starts getting uglier, though. Supply lines being cut. Uh, and reduced uh, movement points being reduced, etc. That starts, you know, really beginning to tell on what the Confederates can start doing. And they're really getting sliced up here, even though they own the Mississippi, but they lost the big north, uh, the, the big eastern side of things. I got uh, a couple of strength points to make disappear here. Gotta remember. Take the Union one off. That one recovers. That's the army oh, over here in the southwest, which I was able to recuperate. And yeah, it does not, you know, here I was thinking the south is just hosed uh, all game. And uh, well, it just broke open all at once. You'd kind of think keeping your productive capability up and everything should have an effect. It really doesn't in this, though. Once, you know, the, things are going to break somewhere. You can't, apparently you cannot let them break in the East. It's too valuable. Letting the Mississippi break at expense, no question. I mean, the Union has lost two armies here. Of course, some of the Confederates. Uh, but the Union's, one is only the West, so it's not that big. The Union's lost two armies. How can they, how can they be operating still? I don't know. All right, let's put this one up.